الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد فهذا هو الدرس الثالث This is our third class and our readings and studies together of the great treaties the book entitled Akhlaq Hamalat al-Qur'an the manners of the carriers of the Qur'an, authored by the great Imam, Al-Imam Al-Ajuri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Before we begin reading tonight, we will begin, Bi-Ibnillahi Ta'ala, Bi-Shay'in Min Al-Muraji'ah, with a little, with a little bit of review. Who can remember the full name of the author? Al-Imam Al-Ajuri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Anybody can help? Kunyatuhu Abu Bakrin. Naam. Rahimahullah Abu Bakr. Ismuhu Ism al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name is the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah, Muhammad. His father is the name, has the same name as one of the grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? Somebody said it. I heard somebody say it. Al Hussein. Hey, don't be shy. La haya fil ilm. There's no shyness in knowledge. Al haya shu'batun min al iman. But not in knowledge. And knowledge we hasten. If we get it right, alhamdulillah. If we get it wrong, then we get corrected, alhamdulillah. This is what we're seeking, to be correct. Naam, Muhammad ibn al Hussein, Abu Bakr. Muhammad ibn al Hussein, ibn Abdullah, al Ajuri, al Baghdadi. Or al Baghdadi, al Ajuri, rahimahullah ta'ala. When did he die? Mata tuwufiya, rahimahullah. Ayyuwa. في السنة ستين وثلاثمية three hundred who else died from the great ulama of hadith in this year الطبري لا الطبري he died in three ten before him by twenty uh, by how much by by fifty three ten الطبراني الطبراني نعم صاحب المعجم أو المعاجم الثلاثة and also one more Aywa, Arham Ramazi, Nam, Ram Barik, Nam, Abdurrahman al Khalad, Ram Ramazi, Rahim Allah Taala, Sahib al Muhaddith al Fasil, Ben al Rawi wal Wa'i. Nam, the author here, he died in the year three hundred and sixty. Nam, so he's very close. He lived in in a, a portion of, uh, and he's living in after the golden eras. In the, in the era of Islam, in the, in the time of, it's called Asr Riwaya, whenever the, the time, whenever the ulama and the deen is being transmitted by, by narration. And he is from those narrators. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So we began reading from his uh, introduction, and then uh, we continue today reading from his introduction, but before we begin the new reading, just to, to go back and to reaffirm what he mentioned before, we summarize. That he mentioned, praising uh, that the, 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 excuse me, that the Quran, it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and this is from the greatest of blessings. Whether the ulama they say this is the greatest blessing, the re- the revelation of the Quran, bringing the people from the darkness into the light, the revelation of the Quran to the Prophet and the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this religion, this is the greatest blessing upon the creation. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informed the Prophet of this great blessing and how virtuous it is. وَكَانَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تُكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا And Allah has taught you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that which you did not know and the verity and the grace and the virtue of Allah upon you is great. So Allah informed the Prophet of the, of, the, of the greatness of what was revealed to him and the virtue of what was revealed to him. And likewise, the author, he mentioned the clarification that this book, Al-Qur'an, it is an isma, liman i'tasama bihi. 
It is a means of safety and security from the one, for the one who holds fast to it. Likewise, he said, وَهُدًا لِمَنِ اِهْتَدَى بِهِ And it is a guidance for the one who seeks its guidance or follows its guidance. وَغِنًا لِمَنِ اسْتَغْنَى بِهِ And it is a means of satisfaction and contentment. Sufficiency for the one who suffices with it. And in all aspects of life. وَهِرْزُمْ وَهِرْزُمْ لِمَنْ لِمَنْ اِتَّبَعَهُ And it is a protection for the one who follows it. And it's protection from the punishment and from the dangers of misguidance in this life and from the punishment of Allah and the hereafter. The Qur'an and following the Qur'an is a protection from this. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَنُورٌ لِمَنْ اسْتَنَارَ بِهِ And it is a light for the one who seeks its light. He's mentioning all these things in his introduction. Before mentioning the verses or the proofs, he's mentioning to us that this is the case of this book. This is the reality of this noble Qur'an. كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى. He said then, وشفاء لمن هو في الصدو. لما هو في الصدو. شفاء it is a heal and a cure. The Quran is a cure for that which is in the hearts, for that which is in the breasts. وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين. And this book it is a guidance, a means of guidance and direction, and it is a mercy for the believers. And he mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal in His book has commanded the people to believe in it and to apply it and to work by way of it. Allah has mentioned this in his book. He has commanded that the people believe in it. Ya yuladina amanu aminu billahi wa rasulihi wal kitab alladhi nazzal ala rasulihi. Oh, you who believe, believe in Allah and believe in the messenger, his messenger and believe in the book that was revealed to his messenger. Allah has commanded to believe in this book. It's a commandment. Naam amru min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has also mentioned, the author has mentioned that the one who believes in it and applies it the way that he applies it, he applies that which is clear from it. That which is clear, the clear verses, the direct verses, al-muhkamat. And how does he deal with the verses that may be unclear to him? He believes in them. He believes in them, but he doesn't try to deny them or find fault with them. Rather, he believes in all of it, and he follows that which is clear and that which is direct. This is the methodology of the believer in the Qur'an. He works by muhkamihi, meaning that he will find what is halal in the Quran and he will believe it to be halal and he will partake in it, seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa And he will find what is haram in the Quran, he will declare it and believe it to be haram and he will leave it off seeking the, uh, fearing the punishment of Allah Azza wa This is what it means to work by the clear, to apply in application the clear verses, the clear verses of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the author, he mentioned uh, these issues and then likewise after after that in his introduction from what we read last week we continue summarizing he mentioned the promise of Allah wa'dullah for the one who believes in it and follows it that he will be saved from the hellfire and that he will be admitted into paradise the one who believes in this book the Quran the final revelation of Allah and he follows it this is a protection for him and a savior a means of protection and savior from the, from the hellfire and a means to be admitted into the paradise. And likewise, he mentioned that Allah in his book has encouraged the believers and he has encouraged all mankind rather to ponder over the verses of the Quran and to think deeply about the meanings of the Quran with the heart and the mind, to strive to comprehend and think deeply of the meanings of the the words of this book, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he also encouraged to listen attentively. All of this, the author has mentioned in what we have uh, read previously, and he mentioned likewise for the one who uh, performs these actions in this manner, the promise of Allah azza wa jal with that, for a great reward in this life and, uh, and in the hereafter. So we continue reading from where, uh, where we left off. In our readings last week, and the author, he says, or the one who has transmitted this particular uh, text to us, from the author, he says, Qala Abu Bakrin. Qala Abu Bakrin. Who's that? The narrator who is listening to the author, now he was narrating this, who is in the chain, now he is saying, Qala Abu, Qala Abu Bakrin. He's telling us now, the author has said. Abu Bakr is Muhammad ibn al Hussein al Ajwari rahimahullah ta'ala. He says, the, so the author says now, جَمِيُّ مَا ذَكَرْتُهُ This is a very important point and, and, and a great, great benefit. 
how he introduces this now, everything that he mentioned before, basically everything that we summarized just now. He says, جَمِيعُ مَا ذَكَرْتُهُ وَمَا سَأَذْكُرُهُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ بَيَّانُهُ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَمِنْ قَوْلِ صَحَابَتِهِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَالسَّائِلِ أَلُولَمَا وَأَنَا أَذْكُرُ مِنْهُ مَا حَضَرَنِي ذِكْرُهُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَاللَّهُ الْمُوَفِقُ فِي ذَلِكَ He mentioned, he said, everything that I have mentioned thus far and everything that I will mention, that's, that's come, that I will mention here in this book, insha'Allah, its clarification is in the book of Allah and in the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the statements of His companions radiyallahu anhum and their statements of the rest of the scholars. And I will mention now that which I can remember, insha'Allah, that which comes to mind. I will mention from that which, that which comes to mind, insha'Allah, and Allah is the one who gives success for this. So we see that the author in this mention here, he says everything that I have mentioned and everything that I will mention, the clarification, insha'Allah, can be found in the book of Allah. And in the sunnah of his messenger, and the statements of his companions, huh? This is the methodology of the author. The author now is clarifying for us the methodology that he is traversing upon. And the manhaj. Al manhaj alayhi yasiru alayhi wa yadinu Allahu wa yadinu Allah bihi. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is the way that the author understands this religion. And this is what he's clarifying for, for, for us. And he is Letting us know that this is what he is upon. And if we see that this is this right here, that this author, he is from the, the ulama of the salaf. And he's from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And it's clear in this clarification right here. What did he mention? Everything that I have mentioned. And everything that I will mention, insha'Allah, is in the book of Allah. And in the sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the statement of his companions, radiallahu anhu. We see this great scholar, Al-Imam Al-Ajuri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he didn't die in 2000 and something. He didn't die in 1990 something. He didn't die in 1800s, 1700s. He didn't die in the 1600s. He didn't die in 600, not in 500, 400, rather. He died in 360. So this is, a, this is not a new methodology. This is not a new deen. This is not a new way. Rather, this is the methodology of the ulama. The understanding of the religion, the religion of Al-Islam, is in this manner. And this is how it was transmitted to us by the ulama of hadith. This is the way that it was transmitted to us by the umana, the reliable, the thiqat. Now, the people who are trustworthy and reliable, the people who are upright, as salihun min ahl al-hadith, transmitting, tra- transmitting the religion in this manner. The deen is what? Qala Allahu. قَالَ رَسُولُهُ قَالَ صَحَابَتُهُمْ أُولُ الْأَفَانِي Now, this is the religion. And this is the methodology. We can see that this author, he was upon this way. وَلِلَهِ الْحَمْدِ So again, if we look and ponder over the work of the ulama, of the salaf, of the past and of the present, we will see that they're all in one way. They're all in one way. Shaykh al-Rabani is not the first one to mention this. You have to have the understanding of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet along with the statements of the Sahaba. Before him, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he's not the one, first one who said this. And before that, those who came before him and those who came before him and those who came before him, even if we were to look further back in the books, we will find other books with the same clarification. This author, he died in 360. This is his methodology and he's clarifying in the beginning of his book. What I mentioned to you so far, what I will mention to you now in the future in this particular work, it comes from these sources right here, insha'Allah. Allahu Akbar. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So now the author, he says, beginning, and the testification that to that, and exactly what he says, fulfilling what he has mentioned, قال الله عز وجل إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتُلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورُ لِيُوَفِّيَهُمْ لِيُوَفِّيَهُمْ أُجُورَهُمْ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ شُكُورٌ 
إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ He mentioned the verse of Allah, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, the meaning of which is, Verily those who recite the book of Allah, and perform as salah and spend in charity out of what we have provided for them, secretly and openly, they hope for a sure trade and gain that will never perish, that they may pay their wages in full and give even more out of His grace. Verily, He is off-forgiven, off-forgiving, most ready to appreciate good deeds and to recompense. The author, he began with this noble verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has mentioned, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَذْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ Al-Imam Al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, يَذْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ أَيَّ تَبِعُونَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ He said, rahimahullah ta'ala, يَتَّبِعُونَهُ فِي أَوَامِرِهِ فَيَمْتَثِرُونَهَا وفي نواهيه فيتركونها وفي أخباره فيصدقونها ويعتقدونها ولا يقدمون عليه ما خالفه من الأقوال الذين يدرون كتاب الله those who recite the book of Allah إن الذين يدرون يدرون كتاب الله وأقام الصلاة verily those who recite the book of Allah and they establish the salat what is the true understanding of reciting the book of Allah it's not simple recitation only. Many people have a misunderstanding, particularly in these days. And this is not a new misunderstanding, but rather it goes back. And it's from shaitan, re- misleading the people to think that the Qur'an was meant simply for recitation. La, the Qur'an is a recitation, but the true tilawa and the true recitation is to recite it properly and to follow its meanings. It's to recite it properly and to follow its meanings. So whenever Allah Azza wa Jalla is praising these people in this verse, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ Verily those who are reciting the book of Allah, Al-Imam Al-Sa'di, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, what did he mention? He said those who, fa- those who uh, follow it with regards to its commandments, and they comply to them. And they follow it with regards to its prohibitions, and they stay away from them. And they, and they follow it with regards to the information that is found therein, and they believe in it. And they believe in it. And they do not give precedence to anything that goes in opposition to this from the statements of the people. So the true recitation, first beginning, the author is mentioning these verses here particularly. And there is an indication here. And that is the reality that this book, it is recited, and it is followed. And the one who recites the book but he does not follow it, his recitation is a proof against him. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Al-Qur'an hujjatun laka aw alayka. The Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. The Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. Now, so it's very important to understand this. Likewise, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, Ibn Nasir al-Sa'di, rahimah wa ta'ala, he mentioned, وَيَدْرُونَ أَيْضًا أَلْفَاظَهُ بِدِرَاسَتِهِ وَمَعَانِيَهُ بِتَتَابُوِهَا he said, likewise, they are reciting. So the recitation, it has two meanings. The word tilawa. We have to understand this. The word tilawa, some people may understand it to mean recitation. This is one meaning. But the Arabic language is rich. So one word, it may have more than one meaning. And according to the context, will be understood. That the, 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 the meaning will be understood and clarified. So the word tala, yatlu, utlu, tilawatan, lahumaniyan. It has two meanings, tala. So you can say, for example, أنا تلوت القرآن I recited the Qur'an, I قرأته Now it has this meaning to recite. But likewise it has the meaning, tala, بمعنى التبع والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا إذا تلاها ما معنى تلاها هنا؟ إذا قرأها لا, أبدا إذا تلاها أي جاء بعدها اتبعها Na'am, so tala, it means to follow. Whenever Allah swears by the sun in its, in its brightness, in its glory, and by the moon as it follows. The point here is that this word tala is there. That's the same word here. Al-lina ya inna al-lina ya tuluna kitab Allah. So the, the, the both meanings are here. They recite it and they follow it. Imam, this is what uh, the Imam is mentioning here. Imam Abdul Rahman, Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nafir al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, they follow it, its commandments. 
by complying to them, leaving off its prohibitions by staying away from them, believing in what is therein from information and from the news and from the stories. They believe in that and they do not give presence to anything over this. From the statements of the people, likewise they recite its words and, they rec- and by studying it and they recite its meanings by following them and trying to understand them and bring out the good understanding from these meanings. So this is a very important point that the ulama they mention with regards to the recitation of the Qur'an. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He mentioned, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Verily, those who we have given the book, they recited the true recitation. These are the ones who truly believe in it. يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ The ulama they mentioned, يَتَّبِعُونَهُ حَقَّ اِتِبَاعِهِ they're following it, the true following. So we see that the one who is truly fa- reciting the Qur'an, he is the one who is following it. Right? That this is the, the goal, and this is what the Qur'an was revealed for, to be applied. Reciting it is a means to achieve this understanding and to apply it. Reciting it is a means. And there is great barakah in the recitation, but that's not the hadith, that's not the goal in the raya from the Qur'an. The Qur'an is to be recited so that it can be pondered over, understood, and followed. So then the goal from the Qur'an and from the revelation of the Qur'an is to be comprehended and understood in order to be applied. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ These are the ones who believe in it. The ones who recite it is true recitation. The ones who follow it truly. The ones who follow the halal and the haram in the Qur'an and believe in it and apply it in their lives. These are the ones who truly believe in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. These are the ones who truly believe in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. He mentioned, وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا In public, or in, or in private and in public. Private and openly. سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيًا أي في كل حال وفي كل حين All the time spending. Spending in, private, in public amongst the people, spending in private when one is alone. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it has been narrated authentically from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the hadith of Az-Zubayr, Shaykh al-Bani, rahimahullah, he has authenticated this narration. He mentioned, مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ خَبْءٌ أَوْ خِبْءٌ مِنْ عَمَلٍ صَالِحٌ فَلْيَفْعَلٌ خِبْءٌ مَنْ, من اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ خِبْءٌ من عمل صالح فليفعل. Whoever from you is able to have some hidden, uh, some uh, some hidden good deeds, then let him do it. يعني خب من عمل صالح يعني عمل صالحة لا يعرف عنها إلا الله سبحانه وتعالى. Any good deeds that no one knows about them from the people except for Allah Azza wa Jalla. Some of the ulama the salaf that. They were mentioned, كانوا يستحبون أن يكون لهم خبيئة من أعمال صالحة لا يعرفها حتى زوجة لا يعرف أنها حتى زوجته. Like they, the salaf they used to say that they, they, the pious predecessors before they would prefer for an individual to have some hidden good deeds that no one knows about it, not even his wife. And this is a means to to treat one's sincerity. And to test one's faith and sincerity and ikhlas. And he يعالج المرء إخلاصه بهذا العمل. He will treat himself, his heart. Because the heart loves to be praised and it loves to be raised in rank and it loves to have status and it loves to have the dunya. This is something that is in the heart. We're tried with this. A means to treat this and to cure this is to have some hidden deeds. No one knows about them. To stand in a night prayer, not waking up anybody. Nobody knows about it. To give some charity, nobody knows about it. And in these days, that could be easy. Somebody can go online when nobody is looking. Online and give charity online to the masjid. There's a way to do it online. Like this, nobody knows about it. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even the wife. It's been mentioned that there are narrations from some of the salaf that they would be on, uh, in, in their bed lying there with tears in their eyes next to their family and no one would know about it. They would hide it from their family. They would hide their good deeds. Even some of the salaf, they used to say that it's more preferred you should, that you should hide your good deeds the way that you hide your bad deeds. And say that the same way that a person, he would hide his bad deeds from the people, he should try to hide his good deeds the same way. 
The same way he wouldn't want the people to see his bad deeds, he should try to have some good deeds in this manner. Although it's sometimes it's preferred to have a good to do good deeds publicly. And that way one can be a qudwa, hasana, and the people could follow them. But here Allah Azza wa He's praising these people and from their traces that they spend and that they do these deeds they, they do they do these deeds sirran wa alaniya. Yunfiquna mimma mimma razaqanahum sirran wa alaniya. Why do they do that? Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned Yarjuna Tijara Tanantabur. He said that they are hoping for a trade or a gain that will never perish. Tijara with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will never perish. And a tijara, a commerce and a trade, this is in the hasanat and the good deeds. The one who, and, and what is the gain? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One will do this business and this transaction going with, with this commerce and this trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making his deeds sincerely for him. Tabaraka wa ta'ala in the manner that is pleasing to him. Tabaraka wa ta'ala according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeking the pleasure of Allah azza wa jalla. This is the, the trade and the commerce of the righteous and the pious. Not the commerce of the dunya. Not the trade in the business of the dunya. But they're doing this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَا يَشْرِي نَفْسِهُ بِدِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ The author, likewise he mentioned the, the next verse. He mentioned رَحِيمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمُ وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا وَأَنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَاتِ أَعْتَدَنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal that verily this Quran it guides to that which is most that which is best and most upright. And it gives glad tidings to those who believe and work righteous deeds, that they will have a great reward. And that verily those who do not believe in the hereafter, we have prepared for them a severe punishment. We have prepared for them, excuse me, a painful punishment. And in this book of, of Allah Azza wa Jal, in the Quran, in every aspect, this Quran it guides to that which is most upright and best in every aspect. With regards to creed, the Quran guides to that which is most best and upright. With regards to manners and conduct, the Quran it guides to that which is most upright and correct. With regards to acts of worship, the Quran it guides to that which is most upright and correct. With regards to transactions and billing and dealings, excuse me, with wealth and property or with the family and the likes in relationships, it guides to that which is most upright. That's why you will find that the one who truly follows this Quran, sincerely following the Book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, you will find him to be the most complete of the people and the best of the people. You will find him to be the most guided of the people, the most calm, the most kind, the most level-headed. You will find him to be the most honest, and the best of the people, the one who follows this book sincerely, learns how to recite it, learns how to understand it, learns how to follow it, then he will be from the best of the creation. Because this Quran, it guides to that which is best. And the one who was guided by it, then he will be from amongst the best. Then he will be from amongst, from amongst the best. Likewise, the author, he mentioned the next verse. He said, yeah, you had, uh, he mentioned the verse of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah has mentioned, وَيُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيبُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا and he mentioned another verse, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he says, وَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدَ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِضَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The first verse, the author he has mentioned, and we reveal the Qur'an, that which is a heal and a mercy for the believers. But it does not increase the oppressors in anything except for loss. The believers, the book of Allah is a cure and it is a heal for all types of diseases. For every type of disease, the Quran has been revealed for the believers as a, as a cure. And it is a mercy likewise for the believers. As, the, as for those who turn away from it, 
And as for those who do not follow it, who do not give any attention to it and disbelieve in it, or as for those who know about it and they're aware of it, but they do not follow it, and they leave off following the Qur'an upon knowledge, then what is Allah mentioned about then? وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا but it does not increase the oppressors except for in loss and in, and in destruction. And the, the, the next verse that the author mentioned, he said, O oh, you mankind, verily an admonition has come to you from your Lord and a cure for that which is in the breasts and a guidance and a mercy for the believers. And a guidance and a mercy for the believers. This book is an admonition. It is a commandment, commanding, commanding all that is good and is prohibiting all that is evil, and it is a cure for that which is in the hearts, and it is a guidance, and it is a mercy. It is a mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down this book. It is a mercy that an individual will be able to know what is pleasing to Allah from the halal and to perform it. It is a mercy and a rahmah that an individual will be aware of that which is haram and displeasing to Allah so he can stay away from it. This is a great mercy. And thus doing this, he receives a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and in the hereafter, the promise of paradise. Verily, the Qur'an is a mercy for the believers and a means of guidance. But likewise, we, we see that the, these two verses, as the author mentioned in the beginning, it is, the Qur'an is shifa. Shifa unima fi sudur. It is a cure and a heal. It will heal that which is in the hearts. A means for healing that which is in the breasts. It has been narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu fi Sahih bukhari that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned about uh, this issue of, of cure, of, of the cure. مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ دَاءً إِلَّا أَنزَلَ لَهُ شِفَاءً Allahu Akbar. Allah has not revealed any disease except that he has revealed along with it the cure. Likewise, it's been narrated by Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, in Al-Musnad, the Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ دَائِنْ إِلَّا وَقَدْ أَنزَلَ لَهُ شِفَاءً عَلِمَهُ مَنْ عَلِمَهُ وَجَهِلَهُ مَنْ جَهِلَ In this narration in Al-Musnad by Imam Ahmed, from the narration of Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that Allah has not sent down any disease except He has sent down likewise the cure. Those who know it, they know it, and those who don't know it, they don't know it. Those who know it, they know it, and those who don't know it, or they are ignorant of it, then they, they, don't, they do not know it. Now, Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned with this regard, he says, هذا يعم الدواء القلب والروح والبدن وأدويتها I mean, the fact that Allah has not sent down any disease except He has sent along with it a cure, those who know it, they know it, and those who don't know it, they don't know it. Then Ibn Qayyim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned this is, includes every disease, the diseases, diseases of the heart, and the diseases of the soul, and the diseases of the body, and the cures. They are all found in the Book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Qur'an, we have to understand, my noble brothers, it is shifa. Shifa un lima fi sudur. Even from the names of Al-Fatiha, Al-Ruqya. Al-Ruqya, the cure. Because it has specifically been narrated that it has been used and approved by the Prophet wasallam as a means for curing the, an ailment of the body. Ailments of the body. But a lot of times when an individual, he'll think about Al-Istishta bil-Qur'an. Or Al-Ruqya bil-Qur'an. We'll always think maybe about uh, somebody has an ailment or he has a, 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 a poisonous bite. Or somebody is touched by a jinn, or the likes like this, and this is whatever they think about. Okay, khalas, we can cure him, inshallah, with the Quran. Read the Quran on him. But likewise, there's another understanding that we should not have our minds far away from, whether we should have it in the, in the first of our mind, in the front of our mind, with regards to curing ourselves and the diseases in our own hearts with this book, with the Quran, with the book of Allah. Azza wa Jal. And that is, the author is going to clarify in greater detail. Insha'Allah, as we read. But this is by looking into the Qur'an and then looking into one's own affair. Seeing that, for example, the Qur'an, it prohibits disobeying the parents and it prohibits backbiting and then looking into one's own affair. How am I with this? If I see that this is something that the Qur'an commands, no backbiting. 
This is how the Prophet ﷺ, he, he described back by him, to mention your brother in a manner he doesn't like. Then I look at myself. And then if I see that I have this issue, I will try to treat myself and to cure myself. And I will seek the aid and the help of Allah. And I will seek forgiveness from Allah for what has passed. And I will strive to leave that. Likewise, having bad opinion about the believers. Likewise, name calling the believers. And the likes like this. All of this found in Surah Al-Hujra. One could read this surah and ponder over the surah and try to apply in that and, and, clear, and, cure, and cure many of the diseases that an individual will have. There are many diseases in the heart from... Al-Baghdad, Wal-Adawa, Wal-Hikad, Wal-Hasad, Envy, and, and, and Jealousy, and Hatred, Animosity, all of these, Jahl, Ignorance, Al-Firqa, where the, to, to, this is family of the heart, the heart doesn't like to be with the, with the believers, Awdhu Billah, Dissension, all of these can be found in the heart. Misguidance, Shubuhat, likewise, but the Qur'an is the cure for that. How is that? The Qur'an is the cure from the Ruqya, yes. But likewise, the Qur'an is the cure by reading it and learning it and following it. This is the cure. This is the cure. Those who have tried and tested, they say, SubhanAllah. For somebody, maybe, for example, we know brothers, maybe they have, uh, in the past, they have been criminals. They could have been from the, low, from the lowest of the people or, or, or drug dealers. And then they read the book and they listened to it and they heard it and they comprehended it and they believed in it and started to follow it and they turned into the, to be the best of the people, the most pious of the people, the most fearing of Allah Azza wa Jalla, those who guard their tongue the most, those who who guard their eyes the most. They went from this into that and why? They, they, Allah cured them. And we reveal uh, in, in the Quran that, that which is a cure, that which is a cure. So the true cure is by following the book of Allah. And again, he reciting it, the true recitation, following it, the true following, this is the means to cure the diseases of the heart. Reading about shirk and how filthy it is and disgusting it is and how Allah has blamed it in many places in the book and commanded with its opposite at tawheed and clarified this. And one would leave off showing off or leave, leave off wanting the praise of the people and, and, and turn to Allah. He, would, he can cure his own heart by pondering over this book. Pondering over the book of Allah and then following it. And then following it. Striving against the soul. Striving against oneself. To apply what he has learned and to apply what he has heard and read from the book of his Lord, from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the author he mentioned, وَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَا يُهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْحَانٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُبِينًا فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاعْتَصَمُوا بِهِ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَيْهِ صِرَاطًا مستقيما. If we look at what he had precededly mentioned in the beginning of the introduction, every, everything he mentioned is now here in these verses. It's a, it's a guidance for those who seek guidance from it. It's a light for those who seek its light. It's a savior and a, and a protection for those who seek its uh, protection and, and those who hold fast to it. And the lights like this. This noble verse, O you, O mankind, verily a clear proof has come to you from your Lord and we have, re we have revealed to you a clear light. So as for those who believe in Allah, and those who hold fast to Him, then verily we will enter them into a mercy from us and a grace, and we will guide them to a straight path. And we will guide them to a straight path. It means, anyone ever says, and they held fast to Allah, when somebody grabs something really tight, with domestic obedience. To always put one's trust and reliance in Allah and everything. One tries to achieve it, his trust and reliance is in Allah. If he obtains it, alhamdulillah, if he did not obtain it, his trust and his reliance is in Allah. He knows it wasn't from his decree. 
bihi, and they hold fast to Allah, meaning they're trusting in Him entirely, relying on Him entirely, putting their trust and faith in Allah Azza wa Jal, and being pleased with the outcome of His commands. Whatever Allah does with him, alhamdulillah. Naam, this is the one who holds fast to the Quran, the one who fought out to Allah, the one who holds fast like this, then he will be guided. Then he will have mercy, and he will have a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned likewise the next verse, وَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَاعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ He mentioned the, the great verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a hold fast to the rope of Allah altogether. And he hold fast to this Qur'an. Huh? And this Qur'an, it commands us to hold fast to the Prophet and to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So hold fast to the rope of Allah altogether and do not be divided. And remember the bounty of Allah upon you whenever you were enemies before and He united between your hearts. You were enemies before and, you were, and He united your hearts. Many of the people, if we had met them three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, maybe they would be our enemies. Maybe they would try to harm us. But today... They're our brothers. Allah Azawajal has united the hearts. And this is not something that a person is able to do. To turn a person completely away from misguidance into the truth. To turn a person completely away from falsehood into the haqq. This is from the, the grace of Allah. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the bounty of Allah upon you whenever you were enemies. And then Allah united your hearts. Allah Azawajal. No one can unite the hearts. Like in Allah, but Allah is He is the one who unites, uh, unites the hearts. And Allah is He mentioned, and they were on a, the brink or the, of a pit of fire, and uh, uh, oh, excuse me, and He united between your your hearts, and you became brothers by His bi'nimatihi. فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا You became brothers by His ni'mah, by His grace and by His bounty. Now by His blessing. It's a blessing that we're brothers. بِنِعْمَتِهِ أَسْبَحْنِ إِخْوَانًا We're brothers. This one's from America and this one is from Africa and this one is from France and this one is from the north side and this one's from the south side and this one is from Iran and this one is from here and we're all brothers. Allah Azza united our hearts upon what? What is the ni'mah that Allah he has united us upon? Huh? Al-Islam, Al-Sahih, Al-Aqidah, Al-Sahih, Naam, Al-Manhaj, Al-Saleem, Al-Qawim, Alhamdulillah. You are on the brink of a pit of fire and Allah saved you from that. And in this manner Allah clarifies for you His signs so that you may be guided. And then after this verse, the author he mentioned, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Wa qala azza wa jal, Allahu nazzala ahsan al-hadithi, kitaban, mutashabihan, mathaniya, taqashi'irru minhu juludu ladhina yakshawna rabbahum, thumma tarinu juluduhum, uqulubuhum ila dhikrillah. Thalika huda Allahi yahdi bihi man yasha, wa ma yubbalillahu famalahu min had. He mentioned this great verse from Surah Zumar. Allah has sent down the best statement, a book, Meaning this Quran, its parts, its parts resembling each other in goodness and truth, oft repeated. The skins of those who fear their Lord shiver from it when they recite it or hear it. Then their skin and their hearts soften to the remembrance of Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. He guides there with whom He wills, and whoever Allah sends astray, for him there is no guide. Then for him there is no guide. Allah anzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban mutashabiha resembling each other in beauty and the, the Quran parts of it resemble other parts in beauty and with regards to the commandments mathania soft repeated repeating itself the stories are repeated and it's resembling itself in its greatness and its eloquence and its beauty and its perfection and the commandments they come in many different ways one commandment may come in many different ayat, in many different manners. Sometimes directly, sometimes it will be indirectly. 
the clarification of Tawheed and Shirk, the obligation to pray. All of these issues, the commandments and the prohibitions, they come repeatedly in the Book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. In the best manner. In the best manner. They come repeatedly in the Book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the stories of the Prophet likewise. The clarification of the, dis- the, of the attributes and the beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's coming in this book. قَدْ أَنزَلَ أَلَّهُ أَنزَلَ أَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابًا مُتَشَابِهًا مَثَانِيًا يُثَنِّي فِيهِ أَلَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى ذِكْرَ أُصَافِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَأَخْبَارُ الْأُمَّمَ السَّابِقَةِ It's coming repeatedly. One time, two times, three times. The story of Musa alayhi salam, different perspectives. The stories of the Anbiya, Ibrahim alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wa salam, different perspectives. The commandments of Tawheed, the obligation of Tawheed, the fact that every messenger he came with this obligation. It's in the, it's in the book of Allah, many different manners and different ways. Allah Akbar. May Allah make us from those who fear, who fear Him and benefit from this book, and benefit from His book. The author, he says, وَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَذَّكَرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ A book that we have revealed to you, meaning, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is blessed so that they may ponder over its verses and so that the men of sound understanding may remember. Here the Allah Azza wa Jal, he's clarified that this book is a blessed book. It was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Nabi. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? لِيَدَّنْ بَرُوا آيَاتِهِ So that its verses can be pondered. So that its verses can be pondered over. This is what the, re- the, bo- the book is revealed for this man. So that one could ponder over the verses. After this, it's, the author is going to mention another verse. But I want to mention before that, so we can compare between the two. It would be very difficult to ponder over this book. It's possible. But the true tadabbur of Allah, of the words of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it will only be for the one who has a lisan al Arabi. The one who knows the Arabic language. The true tadabbur of the Quran is not going to come from reading an English translation or a Chinese translation. Although if one can't reach that level, and he, meaning he does not know uh, Arabic, alhamdulillah, he suffice, and he benefits from what he has. But I mention this as an encouragement for the brothers uh, to learn the Arabic language. To learn the Arabic language. So that one can fulfill this purpose, the purpose of the revelation of the Qur'an. Kitabu and zannahu ilayka mubarak. A blessed book we have revealed to you. Why? So that they may ponder over its verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blames the people. Do they not ponder over the Quran? Or rather, are their hearts locked up? Some of the ulama they mention am here means bal, bal, ala qulubin aqfaluha. Rather, their hearts are locked up because of sins, because of transgression. Now, the Quran is revealed. Why? To ponder. To be pondered over. Why? To be followed. Because the one who ponders over it, then he understands it. At this time, by the permission of Allah, it will affect the heart. This is how the, the Quran will affect the heart. Whenever one ponders over its meanings. And he realizes the reality that this is revealed from the creator of the heavens and earth. Then the heart will explode. And he from fear and from love and from hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then it would benefit from pondering. After this, the verse, the, excuse me, the author mentioned and it's very and <laughs> He said, and like this, we have revealed a, an Arabic Qur'an. And he ponder over the, the last verse, ponder over the Qur'an. Then the author is clarifying that Allah mentioned that this Qur'an, we, that, he have, that Allah has revealed, it is an Arabic Qur'an. Now, and we have 
clarified in great detail the threats. Clarify. We have clarified in great detail the threats. I mean, the threat of the, the of the punishment and the threat of the hellfire, the threat of the anger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for those who disobey Him, for those who disbelieve in Him, or for those who disobey Him. Why? Again, عَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ أَوْ يُحْرِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا that, So that they may fear Allah جل, by obeying Him. Or say that, so that whenever they hear this Arabic Qur'an and they ponder over and they understand it, يُحْرِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا They will remember, Ah, أَنَا عَبْدٌ مَرْبُوبٌ I'm a slave. I have a Lord. There are angels writing my deeds. Whenever the one ponders over this book and he understands it, he will remember this. He will fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And if he, if he already fears Allah Azza wa Jal, he will increase. And if not, he will remember, Oh, astaghfirullah. He will wake up from his ghafla, wake up from his heedness, from, from his heedlessness. This is the, the Quran. Whenever it's beneficial. Whenever the one ponders over it. In this manner. But the author, he said, excuse me, Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, Ha. Quran and Arabian. Quran and Arabian. If we ask ourselves, we said, Alhamdulillah, nahnu Muslimun. We're all Muslims. Alhamdulillah, this one is from that land and then this one is from that land, but our Lord is one and our Prophet is one and our book is one. And the ulama, Alhamdulillah, they're all the same ulama. And the Sahaba, the Prophet, Alhamdulillah, it's all the same. The Quran is revealed in Arabic. So our religion is based on the Quran. As the author mentioned in the beginning, the Book of Allah. And it's based on the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and the understanding of the companions. All of this was revealed. The Book of Allah is revealed in Arabic. Quran and Arabian. Now, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, huh? Arabi. He's Arabic. He, he, was, he was an Arab. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His tongue is Arabic. He spoke Arabic. His hadith that clarified this book of Allah Azza wa Jal. That which is general in the book, the, the Sunnah of the Prophet clarifies that. That, that is an Arabic like us. Those who understood that and learned that from him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they spoke Arabic. Those who learned from them, they spoke Arabic. Arabic is part of the deen. To learn Arabic is ibadah. Alima jiddan. To spend money to buy a pencil, to write Arabic and learn Aleph Bata, Tha, Jim Ha Kha is a great deed. The one who has sincerity, he has a great reward. The one who learns Hada Baytun, Wa Hada Kalbun, Wa Hadihi Sayyaratun. Don't think this is a great deed. Seeking the knowledge of the Arabic language is a great, great act of worship. Seeking knowledge in general is a great, great act of worship. From that is the seeking the knowledge of the Arabic language. And the ulama, they mentioned that the, the doors of the Islamic sciences, they're closed for the non-Arab. Meaning for the one who does not know, his, he doesn't understand the Arabic language. Not the non-Arab as a race, but the non-Arab, his tongue. He doesn't know Arabic. The, the doors of the sciences of the, of, the, of the Islamic religion are closed for him. He's only going to be able to get so far. He's only going to go as far as the translators translated. So that means that uh, a brother or sister, we have to wake up. We have to spend money. We have to spend time. We have to spend effort. Brothers that travel over halfway around the world to learn out of Bata. There's somebody in the message that will teach it to you right now. Brothers travel all over the world. They, they sell their car and leave their family behind. Brand, ba baby girls and boys behind. Selling their cars, leaving. Assalamu alaikum, inshallah. Huh? Fi alhamdulillah. And go. Astodiyakum Allah. And leave to go seek the knowledge of Arabic in Egypt and, and, other, land, and other countries. There's somebody maybe here in this community that will teach you. Somebody says, oh, I live 15 minutes, I live 30 minutes away, it's far, akhi, come on. This is the language of Deen, Quran and Arabian. We have to learn the Arabic language. Even somebody who knows the Arabic language, he has to learn it well. We wouldn't suffice with Amiyah. Amiyah is not going to help us learn the uh, understanding the book of Allah. And in actuality, if we look into the reality of the situation, this is the way to set up.
The son of the East has great concern of the Arabic language. It's been narrated from Omar, all the Allahu Anhu, that he used to say, uh, he wrote, he, he, he wrote uh, a risala, a message to Abi uh, Musa, radiyallahu uh, anhu. He said, "Ta'allamu, or excuse me, tafaqahu fi sunnah, wa tafaqahu fi al-Arabiya." He said, "Learn and strive to gain an understanding in the sunnah, and learn and strive to gain an understanding in the Arabic language." In one, in one narration, he said, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, has been narrated from him. That he said, Ta'allamu al-Arabiya fa'innaha min dinikum. Learn the Arabic language, verily it is from your religion. Learn the Arabic language, verily it is from your religion. So a person, he would strive to learn the Arabic language and he would want to learn it good. And he would not suffice with just being able to get by on the street. Rather, somebody who is a student of the Arabic language, he should strive to never use Amiya. As much as he can, unless he's forced to, maybe to do some type of dealings or transactions. And I heard this from Sheikh Abu Badi the Ansari, the son of Sheikh Hamad al Ansari, he used to say this. We would visit him in his library and he would mention this. I heard it more than one time. He would advise the students of knowledge to speak in Arabic Fusha, bi kalam al Mu'arab. Excuse me, bi kalam al Mu'arab. And he would Arab. If the kalam bi Arab, bi kalam al Mu'arab. He would speak with the Arab. And he used to do that also. He would like, for example, he would say, Harayta Zaydan. And he wouldn't say, Harayta Zayd. He would say, Yantiqu bin Arab. I, I heard it from him, and he would advise us to do that. And this helps the student be, to, to make the tongue become accustomed. And sometimes a person may learn that, Fa'il marfu' wa ma'fu' bihi mansub, lakin na lisan ya'asihi. That some, sometimes it will disobey him. It won't say the right thing. But the one who keeps trying, and he'll say, Ja'a Zaydan, ah, Zaydun. And he'll correct himself like this. A person, after a while, the tongue will get better. So there's a difference between somebody, for example, learning the Arabic language and then he's getting by and then learning how to, to learn it good to understand the religion. Because like I said, and it's very clear, the Quran is in Arabic, and the Sunnah is in Arabic, and the statements of the ulama is in Arabic, and the scholars of Tafsir, that, that it's in Arabic. And many of the greatest scholars of Arabic, they're not even Arabs. So don't think that you can't learn because you're not Arab. Alhamdulillah, la. That's not the case. And a person can be Arabic by, by, by his race and he can be Arabic by his tongue. And he can learn the Arabic language and speak better or just as good. But anyways, the point is to learn this language, to, to learn the Quran so that one can ponder over the Quran. And if I just mention, and I, I want to maybe take a little bit longer than uh, a little bit extra time to encourage the brothers. Imagine if you stood in Salat al-Fajr and you know what the Imam said. If you do, alhamdulillah, this is a great blessing. Maybe some people take for advantage. But some people, maybe they stand on Salat al-Fajr and they don't know what the Imam said. They have no clue. How long, is, how long would this go? How long can I stand in Salat al-Fajr and I don't know what the Imam said? How, how long can I stand in Isha? I remember in Medina one time, I just remember one of my friends, he used to have a real hard trouble in he, uh, learning the Arabic language. But I remember one time after Maghrib, he came to me and he told me I under he was about to burst. So happy. I'm so happy. He's like, he's like, I understood that's what he said in Salat. Like it finally clicked for him, alhamdulillah. But I mean, at that, that moment I could see the light in his eye and the benefit that he had got from standing in Salat and understanding the Book of Allah being recited. Allahu Akbar. This is, if, if, if we didn't get just this blessing, that's, that's, that's a great blessing. Not to mention to read uh, not to mention to, to, to never search in the Google again in English. Never have to rely on a translation. Never have to want, you, you go straight to the Sadr and you ask yourself, Allah Akbar, so many benefits from this. So many benefits from learning the Arabic language. And then and for the one who doesn't know, and then likewise learning it well. Even has been narrated by uh, Waqir. Ibn al-Jarrah, he was the, the shaykh of al-Shafi, from the shaykh of al-Shafi. Shafi, he died in 204, Waqiyah uh, ibn al-Jarrah, al-Riyas. Rahimahullah, he died in 197. He said, uh, he said, Atayt al-Amash, his name is Sulaiman ibn Mihran, from the great scholars of the Tabi'een. He died in 148. A great scholar of hadith, al-Amash. Al-Amash. He said, Atayt al-Amash. Asma'u min al-hadith. I came to Amash, I want to hear him narrate hadith to me. What did he say? He said, Urubama lahantu. He said, Maybe I made some mistakes in my Arabic, in my Arabic. Lahantu, and lahan is whenever you make it have a dhamma, it's supposed to have a fatha. 
Or you make you have a kesra, it's supposed to have a dhamma. Like this. And he, he said the wrong the sign. It's supposed to be this way. He made it that way. That's called lahat. Waqiyah ibn al-Jarrah, Rahim Allah says, I, I came to Amash to learn hadith from him. وَرُبَّمَا لَحَنْتُ Maybe when I'm talking to him, I said, you know, a, a mistake in the Arabic grammar. So then, uh, what did uh, he say to him? He said, uh, Ya Abu Sufyan, تَرَقْتَ مَا هُوَ أَوْلَى بِكَ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ He said, Oh, Abu Sufyan, you have left off that which is more rightful than hadith. More rightful than hadith. You left something more rightful than hadith. I came to learn hadith. He's telling, I, you left something even more rightful than hadith. He said, more, وَمَا هُوَ أَوْلَى مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ What is more rightful than hadith? He said, and now. It's an Arabic grammar. And now. He said, after that, he said, فَأَمْلَى عَلَيَ الْعَامَشِ النَّحْوَ ثُمَّ أَمْلَى عَلَيَ الْحَدِيثِ So he said, Amash, after that, he taught me Arabic grammar and then he taught me hadith. He taught me Arabic grammar and then he taught me hadith. Likewise, somebody may drive or fly around the world to learn the Arabic grammar. But if somebody is learning to teach you now, Alhamdulillah, take advantage. Take advantage of the, uh, of the opportunities, my noble brothers. Learning the Arabic language is very, 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 very important. I would put it at the top of the list. After I learned my Quran, my money and my time, my effort, whatever I can do, learning online, learning in the masjid, going overseas, whatever I can take. Somebody knows more Arabic than me, ask them, strive to learn the Arabic language. Make the effort to learn the Arabic language. Spend the money to learn the Arabic language.